if 2020 has reduced my tolerance for everything, but I have been DNFing books like crazy lately. I have DNFed some because I've frankly not enjoyed them at all or because I just couldn't be bothered to continue on. Like once you put it down and stepped away for a few days, there was no motivation to come back. So I've had a crazy number of DNFs lately and I mean I know I'm burnt out, I know we're all burnt out, but I mean it just seems crazy. Maybe I'm having some bad luck picking books. Last night I finished my first book in a while which was My Policeman by Beth Ann Roberts and I wanted to DNF this a couple of times. I was just like I'm not into this Tom guy. He just does not seem like a nice person who considers other people's feelings and is honest with other people. And then I got, I decided to push through because I was like, I can't have another DNF. And the ending is what this one's all about. But books that I actually did not finish include this one The Purpose Path by Nicholas Pierce. So this one. I don't actually know why I picked this up when I was at the library. I think I it was on a I went to the library on a day where I was feeling particularly dismayed with the state of my life and there is a very good reason why I haven't made a lot of videos lately which I can't share yet but hopefully will be soon able to. Um and I think I was just kind of wondering if the choice that I've been making is the right one and then I saw the spine of this as I was walking through the library and I decided to just pick it up. And I started reading it and I never finished. I think it was the first chapter, yeah, What is Success that I actually liked. And, and it's about redefining what success means for you which I found to be quite profound because that's kind of where I'm at. And it's a conversation I've been having um, a lot about just because you're good at something doesn't mean that you find it fulfilling, doesn't mean that because you're ticking the boxes of what society deems to be success that it is in any way making you happy or filling your soul or enriching your life and and kind of the the balance of managing the things we have to do in life like paying the bills, paying the mortgage, all of those sorts of things with I guess this the human struggle for happiness and joy on a consistent level. So I really liked that first chapter and found it really profound and I was fully geared up for the rest of the book to be like that and then I found that this book goes the way a lot of other books in this kind of I want to call it self-help genre go and I find that it's like you could give someone the information and it'd be really profound and helpful in like two chapters three chapters but it gets dragged out for an entire book so I did enjoy the first chapter and then from there it was kind of downhill for me because it became more about the author's faith and religious beliefs and that's fine, believe what you want to believe, but it didn't really move me. It was more than a, a conversation about, about God and God dictating your pathway and showing you the way rather than you listening to your own intuition and following it. And I mean, to be honest, I started to skim read pretty quickly because I mean, I, I, fully respect their beliefs, but that wasn't what I was looking for. I just kind of ended up feeling like the focus on religion in this book would alienate a lot of readers, perhaps because they don't share the same beliefs, or perhaps because, like me, that's not what they came here for. Uh, they were looking for practical advice or ways to uh, feel sure of yourself that you're making the right choice or I don't know I guess some support through the emotional struggle of life but I guess that's probably asking a bit much and especially when the emotional struggle of life is 2020. 
I found myself sitting there going, why am I pushing through this book when I'm not finding anything, when I'm not finding anything that connects to me and moves me and it's not like I have a ton of spare time to just read books that don't move me anywhere. So I just decided to stop. Then I've got a bunch of audiobooks I've stopped. So, uh, Burnout by Emily and Amelia Nagowski. I stopped reading because, well, I stopped listening to it because I've still got two hours and three minutes to go. But I listened to most of it while I was driving back from Jarvis Bay, which is a three hour drive. And except that I was driving on a freeway, I probably would have turned it off earlier and I didn't want to play with my iPod on a road. But I mean, again, valid advice, but I felt like it just went on for too long. And I had recently listened to their interview with Brene Brown, which is um, a podcast called Unlocking Us, and it's a free podcast and you can listen to it. And their interview's about two hours long. I think this book's about seven hours long. And um, to be honest, that interview was the far more concise, um, much more to the point version of this book. So, I mean, and even the stories they tell are almost word for word what's in this book. And I found that I started this book hoping for something as profound as that interview that they hadn't discussed in the interview to come out. And so I kept listening for a while and it just wasn't coming. So I stopped. Um, I'm kind of halfway through the meaning of Mariah Carey and I haven't finished, but I think I might, but I haven't finished. Um, I, again, I've walked away from I Give My Marriage a Year by Holly Wainwright, but I'll probably come back to that one. Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer, the Twilight, it's not even a prequel, like Twilight Book One from Edward's perspective. I think if you're going to give Midnight Sun a go, you still need to be like emotionally invested in the series or you need to brace yourself because we're all at least 10 years older than when the other books came out. It's actually probably way more than that. It's probably like 15 years, but whatever. So hopefully we've all matured and maybe that's why I found it so rough. But I don't know. I think I probably would have struggled with this version of the book in the first place, seeing as I kind of struggled with the books anyway. And again, this is another book that I actually would have DNF'd earlier, except that I was listening to it while I was gardening and my hands were covered in crap and I didn't want to get it all over my iPod. But if I had just been listening to it as I was walking around the block, I would have DNF'd no doubt by chapter four at the latest. In the opening chapter, I was like, yeah, all right, Edward, we get it. You're dangerous and these silly humans just don't know how dangerous you are and how lucky they are that you can control yourself. And then there's the moment where Edward smells Bella for the first time and he says, there's no image violent enough to encompass the force of what happened to me in that moment. Well, except the image of a hundred plus year old dead guy creeping on a teenage girl. Edward seems to note quite a number of times that Bella is clumsy and weaker than your average human. And I was listening going, but why does that do it for you? And also, how come Alice didn't see Bella coming? And then there's a scene where Edward kind of fantasizes about wanting to kill Bella and how if he did, he'd have to kill everybody else in the room. And he could do that really quickly because he's so strong and fast and lethal and dangerous. And it was just a bit awkward when you consider how many like classroom mass shootings there have been. I don't know, I was just a bit uncomfortable. It is well written and I always think that I wish that I could write in a style that has so much detail. But the trouble is as a reader it drives me insane. The first two chapters went for at least two hours and my god they were repetitive. He was so obsessed with her and thinking about every minute detail. If anyone thought about anything as much as Edward did in that first day of meeting her, then you wouldn't be able to function. Like, it's just, it was just irritating. Ultimately for me it was too much of not enough happening. And it was almost a little bit as well like we were 
like the author was trying to convince us that Edward was actually a really nice guy, but this is all after the fact. We already know everything that's going to happen. So it's like after he's been the creepy hundred year old vampire dude who becomes obsessed with um, a teenage girl and stalks her and hangs out in her bedroom and watches her sleep like some dirty creep. It's like that she's trying to convince us that he's actually really sweet and that comes from a good place and that's okay and I was just like no. And to be honest if this book was a drinking game and you were drinking every single time Edward rabbited on about his lust for blood or how super dangerous he is you'd be shit-faced by the end of chapter two. It was so over the top that it made me wonder how he copes with being around her prior to deciding that he wants to save her from every danger that comes her way. And it was just a little... <sighs> Again, had I not been gardening, I would have stopped listening earlier. But then they got to this part where stuff actually started to happen that I remember from the movies and so I was like, alright, let's see how this plays out. And again, the amount of detail and the amount of obsessing over Mike and his every thought, oh my god. And why Bella has arrived at this school and is immediately worshipped like she's some sort of goddess by every human who crosses her path. I mean... Get real. Generally I don't like reviewing YA books because it's a genre that I write in and I just don't really necessarily want to critique in the same genre that I write in because I just, I don't know, I just, I don't actually read a lot of YA to be totally honest and I don't know if that's because I can't read it and write it at the same time, it needs to be separate for me and because I've been writing for so long I can't, I just can't do it, but so maybe there's a bit of that involved with why I didn't like this new Twilight book, but also I just didn't like this new Twilight book. So apparently I got nearly six hours into a 3000 hour book, so I think I did pretty well. The other one I still haven't picked back up is Memoirs and Misinformation by Jim Carrey. And I said this before that I'm probably not going to pick it up again even though I really enjoyed the first part, but I just feel like the way it's written is like a genius joke merged with reality, which is really funny as you're listening to it, but once you step away from it, it's like, I don't really want to go back there because I feel like our world is a really fucked up joke merging with reality. So maybe that's it, but anyway. So basically a ton of DNFs this month uh, let me know below in the comments if you've had a month full of DNFs or if it's just me. And I hope you'll subscribe to this channel and like this video.